Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna add flex superpowers to the tweet embed. Uh, to the right is the tweet embed that will be used as the practical example. Some of the elements would look better with a different layout. The last challenge demonstrated display flex. Uh, the last challenge demonstrated display flex. Here you'll add it to several components in the tweet embed to start adjusting their position. So we want to add the CSS property display flex to all the following items. Note that the selectors are already set up in the CSS. So the CSS, I see we've got body header, header uh, with a profile thumbnail, header with a profile name, header with a follow button, header with a follow button, header three, header four. They actually leave spaces here, which I think is probably a dead giveaway that we're just gonna write display flex in there. Um, so yeah, basically we've got this, what looks like it should be a tweet, but it's all just terribly formatted. And I think putting display flex in there, because they've already got all the other height and width um, selectors in here, that once we add display flex to this tweet, we should be able to um, have a good looking tweet thing. So your header should have a display of flex. Okay, so the header. Okay, cool, now the header is aside to the uh, profile thumbnail image. And then uh, I'm looking here, your footer should have a display property of flex. So, footer. Nice, the footer just sh uh, shaped up right here. Uh, your H3 should have a display property set to flex. Uh, H3. What happened there? sort of moved the H3 around, but it didn't do much. H4 should have the same thing. I'm just gonna copy this. Oh, H4 already does. You can see it's uh, in the same selector. Profile name should have a display of flex. So the profile name's probably this guy. Uh, let's see. Okay, header profile name. Display flex. Oh, cool. Did you see that? What happened there? The at osia shifted up to the top there. The follow button should have a display. The follow button is in the header, so my guess is that it's right here. That should have a property of display flex. Oh, cool. Now it just uh, was vertically aligned. And your stats should have display property flex. And so footer.stats. And so my guess is that it's going to align these two together. Yeah, okay, cool. And because Flex is mobile responsive, the size of your window is gonna depend on how it looks, but that's how you want the mobile responsibility to operate when you shrink and flex the page. So yeah, I'm gonna run the test and it passes. Hope this, uh, hope this was good. The, w the main thing here is that you can break your code down, right? You've got your body, your header, and then the header subtypes. We've got header subtypes, and then we've got elements that we specifically selected because of the period. Uh, the, no, not the period, but their uh, ID, which is uh, denoted with the hashtag. Um, cause the, so yeah, this is the inner P, and then the inner ID. So that's selecting this bit, and we're setting that to display flex with a specific font size. If we were to make that 25, this would be a greater font size. And um, then the footer has subcategories as well that we need to set specific things for. And so yeah, hope this video was helpful, and um, see you guys in the next lesson.